Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Christina. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm in my third year of the program uh, working with Dr. Tanya Israel and specializing in counseling psych. Um, I'm excited to talk to you guys today on your interview day. It's a real bummer that we can't all be there in person um, and that you can't experience the beach and the beautiful mountains and all of the like really special things about being here in Santa Barbara. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to talk with you guys about um, some of the resources on campus that I've found to be particularly helpful and just like really cool um, as in terms of like, um, you know, experiences to learn outside of just our classroom setting or our grad program. So um, without further ado, I'm going to be sharing my screen. And yeah, just talking about um, some of the things we have here at UCSB. So uh, I wanted to start with the UCSB Multicultural Center or the MCC. Um, the MCC is just incredible. Um, they have tons and tons of talks and events um, that I took a lot of advantage of my first year on campus, kind of for thinking about um, issues of racism and transphobia and sexism and kind of all of the oppression um, they have just a lot of like really enriching discussions and conversations about those topics. Um, and so I wanted to share with you all just their website. So here's like their main website um, with different tabs and kind of you can, you know, scroll through this and see kind of read more about the MCC. Um, but I wanted to show you all some of the like recent events, for example, that the MCC has had to offer. So they typically have like a film series. Um, so usually weekly on Wednesdays, they have these film screenings. Um, they're now doing everything online and, and um, you know, due to COVID and the pandemic. And so um, here's like one of the recent events for the film screening. Um, they have this incredible performance um, called The Intersection with Black Folk that I had the privilege of watching online, um, which was amazing. And uh, it was like a theater performance of this incredible professor. Um, so just like really amazing events. Um, and then, for example, there was a panel discussion back in October with um, Brianna Taylor's um, mother as well as um, other black women leaders um, who are you know, fighting for freedom and in the fight against racial injustice. And so um, a really amazing opportunity to have a, a really intimate conversation with these important um, thinkers and to talk about some of the issues that are you know, um, front and center that we're facing as a country. Um, so you can, you know, I just want to kind of share some of the examples of some events. And so um, I also want to talk about briefly the Blum Center. So the Blum Center for Poverty, um, Inequality and Democracy. Um, so I had the opportunity to get involved with the Blum Center as um, a graduate student assistant for a brief time in my first year. Um, and so I learned about some of the initiatives and opportunities that they offer. Um, so they really focus on, um, you know, poverty alleviation, kind of thinking about the intersections of different, um, different um, systems of oppression that impact individuals. And um, so they have some initiatives such as pop-up discussions where, you know, um, graduate students and undergraduates come together to, and just community members, you know, come together to, get together to talk about current issues of poverty and inequality. Um, they tend to bring in experts and different folks to give talks on these topics. So the pop-up discussions are kind of a nice way to process some of that material like before or after a talk. Um, yeah, they also have workshops like I mentioned as well as a podcast that they actually started um, uh, which is a student-led podcast talking about you know different um, issues that are affecting youth today. And they try to bring in interviews with different leaders um, activists, organizers, et cetera, who are taking action in our community um, to, to fight for certain issues that we care about as students. Um, so I encourage you to check their, them out as well in terms of different events and talks that they offer. I also wanna plug the Resource Center for Sexual and Gender Diversity um, for folks who are part of the LGBTQ plus community um, or just wanting to learn more, the um, RCSGD offers 
um, you know, various resources. And um, often as, you know, you're maybe catching a theme here, like these issues are all intersectional, right? So they really take an intersectional approach in thinking about kind of um, also how to support the Black Lives Matter movement, um, as well as undocumented students, et cetera. Um, and so here's like some of the resources, they have a bunch of resources and events um, that you can kind of check out as well. Um, and for example, I just wanted to show you all um, some of their recent events um, have included, for example, um, yeah, like some, some, there was an event for addressing anti-Blackness in the LGBTQ community, um, as well as like empowerment in terms of being queer and trans. Um, so, um, and I also wanna mention um, that the Queer and Trans Graduate Student Union was actually started by a graduate student in our department. Um, so that's also a great resource just for community and connection in terms of uh, supporting queer and trans folks. Um, and then finally, I also wanted to mention the Women's Center. I haven't had a chance to personally check out very many of their events, but I wanted to just like let, let you all know that this exists. Um, and in taking a quick look at some of the events that I saw here, um, they kind of have some cool like so, you know, social events like card making. Um, and then this event that I wish I would have attended myself, but I didn't about gender and power in graduate school, kind of how to have those conversations and reflecting on um, what, that, what that may look like, um, as well as post-election discussions um, and you know, other events around healing and growing with plants, for example. So um, yeah, just like a lot of opportunities for community and learning um, that are available. And, um, I actually didn't pull this up ahead of time, but I also wanted to share with you all um, another resource that I'm is coming to my mind um, for uh, undocumented student services. So I have attended a few trainings um, through this um, this particular center and program, and they offer um, yeah just different support for students who are undocumented. Um, as well as like updates on DACA, updates on policies and kind of how that might be impacting either us as graduate students or, you know, undergraduates that we may work with as, as grad students or just people on our campus in general and in our communities. And so they offer a variety of legal services and um, scholarships and different events. Um, so I encourage you to also check them out too. And yeah, I just, um, you know, sometimes like we can get stuck in our little bubbles um, of the program or uh, just like, you know, um, uh, kind of the conversations that we might want to have beyond just like what we talk about in the classroom. So I wanted to share with you all some of the ways that I've been kind of continuing to engage in these conversations and to learn. So um, yeah, I hope you, I wish you the best of luck today on your interviews um, and uh, if you have any questions for me about graduate school, about um, my experience in the program, or you just want to learn more about any of these resources or really anything, you can feel free to um, shoot me an email. It's kesopo at ucsb.edu. Um, and I'll try to return. Um, I'll try to get back to you. Um, but yeah, I wish you all the best of luck. Take care.